Hi friend, I am Jeremy Tank, and if you are watching this, I am your brand guy. So why does that make me so excited? Why does that make me like speak so woo, right? Well, mostly because this weekend I've had a bunch of people reach out to me, try to talk with me, asking me great questions, um, asking me to participate in a lot of things, and it makes me think, hey, reaching out on, on YouTube, reaching out on Facebook, reaching out through LinkedIn and, and doing this sort of thing is actually working because for some reason you guys are asking me questions and I love that because that's why I'm here. I want to help. I am your brand guy. And what that means is that if you have questions about your brand, about branding, about logos, about design, about talking to your customers, about telling them words that matter, about doing something of impact and sharing your true, full, amazing value with the world, I am here to talk about it with you. That's what I want to do. So I had a bunch of people connect with me this weekend, like I said, and I know about half of those are bots. So if you're a bot, just write bot down in the comments. Um, and about the half of the people that are left, um, the other half, uh, I would say about half of those are looking to gain something from these videos, looking to figure out what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to share, my perspective, uh, just little tips and tricks, things to help you grow, things to help you talk about things. And the other half of the people are looking to sell me something. So they are looking to um, run through the sales process with me. They are looking to see if what they offer actually matches with what I do, who I am, and what I offer. And I love these sales conversations, I gotta tell you, because I have been through three or four different sales trainings now. Um, and that's just learning to sell, learning to make the mindset work and how to talk with people and how to help them see their problems and help show them the path to their problems and, and provide a way to see the world in a new way, to open their eyes so that somebody wants to go, yes, I want to sign up for that. The only problem is, I know a lot of these tricks. So when they try uh, the standard things, they don't really work with me. I'm sorry, guys. I love talking with you. And if you want to run through your sales process with me, absolutely do it. Follow me, like me, wherever those buttons are on this page. Just do it. Go ahead and contact me and give me your pitch. I would love to hear it. And you know what? I will honestly give you feedback, honest feedback, based on whatever it is you're trying to sell me and how you sound to me. Because the thing you don't really know when you're trying to do these pitch things is where that other person is coming from and what they're experiencing and what their life is like. And I hate to say it, one of the things that really happened to, uh, yesterday and this morning was uh, a bunch of friend requests. And then immediately after that, people jumping on and saying, hey, uh, I really resonate with you and I want to know uh, about how many customers do you help a month? Or uh, what are you doing that feels successful? Where do you want to grow to? These questions right off the bat, guys, you have not built the rapport enough to ask the questions. Whoever you are, whatever job you are in, whatever coaching, consulting uh, position you're in, even if you're working for somebody else and you go to talk to your boss, the first thing out of your mouth cannot be your pitch. You have to build rapport. Even with somebody that you have known for years and years and years, if you're going to them to try and sell them something or ask for something, you want to start with something smaller and build up that relationship, build up those feelings, build up whatever it is before you even start to get around to the, hey, what's your vision of the future? How do you plan to get there? What systems are you implementing? Because when you jump into that stuff right away, and especially it's really common on this messenger thing, it's really common on Facebook, it's really common on LinkedIn. It's part of the reason I, I don't like doing outreach marketing. Okay, so there's outbound marketing, which is when you reach out to somebody or you uh, email them, you send, uh, you put ads out there, uh, commercials, uh, any of the social ads, um, anything like anything is asking the person on the other side to respond to you. So anything where you feel like you're really good and, and things are going really well for you, and so you put it out into the world. And, and, uh, I'm doing this backwards. My apologies. So outbound marketing is when I, uh, when I do the ads, when I, when I, I notice I'm saying I now outbound marketing is where I do something outbound. I put out ads, I put out, uh, marketing materials. I put out things to get the customer or the potential customer, um, to agree to that conversation. 
So a lot of these messaging things, that's that conversation. I agree to the conversation because actually I enjoy that conversation. I enjoy listening to somebody try to sell me something. I enjoy that entire process. Why? Because I learn from it every single step, every single time. I'm learning to see if they know the same things about sales that I know, to see if they know some trick that I don't know. Um, and I really like inbound marketing. I consider this thing, this video thing to be inbound marketing. And that is people see this across the web. People see it on YouTube. People see it because other people have shared it with them or said, hey, this guy's weird. Uh, look at this beardy face. You know, go ahead and reach out to him because he knows something about branding. He makes killer logos. He is just kind of fun to talk to. Also, he is an amazing therapist. He listens so well. Um, Susie Jumper uh, recently uh, responded to something on my, uh, on a, uh, video I posted and she said, this guy is so empathetic. He really listens. He really gets it. And I really appreciate that, Susie. Thank you so much. Um, because I do. And I know that I'm fast talking and fast speaking and fast, woo, fast thinking on here. But the thing is, when I sit down with people one-on-one, -on -one, I slow way down. And I'm going to go ahead and bring myself down for a moment. Because it takes so much energy to talk to video, to get people to really excited on video, to get people to understand what I'm saying, that I have to slow down and when I'm doing my regular work, I'm not that crazy. I am really right here and centered and with you. And that's what makes me so excited about being your brand guy is that I'm just, I get to be here and help you and listen to you and understand on a really deep level what you're trying to do, who you're trying to work with. Have you niched down? Have you niched down within that niche? Have you niched down within that niche within that niche? Because that's what people are going to ask you to do. And the thing is, I don't really think that working with marketers, and, and, and please don't misunderstand me, you need marketing at some point of your business. And if you are right there and you are marketing like crazy and it is turning around for you and getting you profits, fantastic. I am not a marketing guy, I am a branding guy. And branding really is about communication. It's about a psychological connection. It's about the vibration of the energy that is captured in a logo that is more than just the visual symbol. It is actually the mental neuro network that connects when people imagine your brand, your symbol, your vision, your camaraderie, your relationship. Everything that is about you and what you are building is your brand. So to me, the visual symbol of that, that logo, it represents something. It represents who you are and what you're trying to grow in the world and the things that you're trying to build out of that. And why do I think that? This is kind of important for why I actually do branding in the first place. Because a core of this is really asking people, where do they want to go? What does your vision look like for the future? And I know a lot of people that use that exact same technique and then try to sell you ads and then try to sell you um, SEO or try to sell you search engine optimization, by the way. Um, SEO, websites, you name it. I hate to say you may not need a lot of that these days. If you have a good network and people that you trust and you like and they see what you do and they respect you and they refer you, turn to your network first. That's your best frame of marketing. Turn to your network per first because people believe people. 80% of people will act on a recommendation before just going out and using somebody's service carte blanche, right? Without any kind of foresight, any kind of knowledge, whatever. Um, that's why Yelp is so popular. That's why um, so many different websites are including some sort of um, rank me, rate me, talk about me, um, tell other people. Because social proof, which is what it is when, when strangers tell you this person is good, is that is branding. That, that is creating a brand. When somebody else says that you're awesome, they are more likely to be believed than you are. So I can sit here and say I'm awesome all day, but when somebody else says it, it means a lot more. And the the I'm getting getting I'm going to get a little woo woo in this. So just roll with me if you can. If you're not really into that, I totally get it. But this is really where my understanding and my heart comes from is a lot of the woo woo stuff because how you feel about yourself dictates how you conduct your business, and. While I don't like the word mindset, how you, how you envision your paradigm, your perception creates your reality. Now, I got books because I'm always getting books on this. I read so many books. I love just synthesizing all this information into everything that I talk about, into everything that I do, into every step. And I am 
I'm one of those people that when I read, I immediately start teaching other people. I immediately, oh, thank you. Thank you guys, thumbs up and hearts. Um, I immediately start teaching, I immediately start synthesizing it, and I got onto this kick uh, last year, really. Uh, COVID kicked in, I started having some severe depression, I started uh, researching and doing more things. That's when I got into uh, rapid transformation therapy, and that's when I got into some of these other things. And part of what I got into is quantum science. And this is the first book I read on quantum science, and it is called Quantum Creativity. Quantum Creativity. Quantum Creativity is by Amit Goswami, PhD. Now, Dr. Goswami is a, uh, or was now, I believe he's retired, uh, yep, retired professor from the Theoretical Physics Department of the University of Oregon in Eugene, and where he'd been since 1968. Now, I got introduced to this guy because I watched the movie What the Bleep, and he was one of the fascinating guys in What the Bleep, him and Joe Dispenza, were two of the fascinating guys in What the Bleep talking about the quantum connections between our world, our mind, our mindsets, our perspective, the way that we saw the world, and what actually happened in it. Now, I find this really fascinating because this comes down to, and, and lots of books talk about this, this comes down to the double slit experiment. And in the double slit experiment, I don't think I have a picture pulled up, but that's okay. What happens is the scientists shoot laser beams as far as I understand it, um, but it's single molecules, single uh, atoms, particles, uh, photons through some thingamajig and the thingamajig has two slits in it. And basically when nobody's really watching it, when nobody's measuring what's happening, the outcome of this double slit experiment looks like, um, looks like a zebra. <laughs> it's, it's just a bunch of stripes and the stripes in the center are more dense, more dark, and the stripes on the edges are lighter, and it kind of feathers out from there. Now, that's really weird because they're shooting one particle, one uh, thing into this, this machine, these, these slits, and just by firing one thing forward without really measuring it or figuring out what's there, it creates a whole array. Now, what people have, get, have gotten from this is that when the particle acts as a wave because it's essentially passing through these two slits simultaneously and ending up in what looks like a, a fanned um, display of, of gradation on the results. Now, what makes this so weird is that when they measured the particle, when they measured, did it go through this hole or this hole, then the results change just by measuring it. And what happens is it ends up being very distinct, very clear that that wave is no longer a wave. It is a particle. It passes through one set and the, the result is very clear. Now, that's, that was years ago. They have replicated this experiment dozens of times uh, with well, the last I saw was a couple years ago where they actually replicated it with a molecule that was 220 something atoms. So this is not even a small photon. Photons are like the size of electrons. They're, they're practically negligible, right? We are swimming in an ocean of photons. Photons what creates the light around us. And there are small particles just like that. Muons and, and all sorts of other things. Electrons. Um, these are all really tiny particles, and if they're acting as a wave, then that means you are literally swimming in an ocean and don't even know it. So, does, does a goldfish know it's in water? Do you realize you are in an ocean of energy all around you? Probably not. Mostly because our senses, sight, sound, smelling, touch, taste, are only meant to pick up certain influences, and then it carries it to our brain via electrical signals, right? Uh, neural signals, uh, firing neurons. So it's this crazy thing that, that, that uh, these small particles, and, and even if these large particles, this huge molecule, honestly, huge molecule, was both a wave and a particle at the same time until someone measured it, and then it was a particle. So what we're thinking at this point, what quantum science is thinking, is that when we observe something, it changes it. Now, observing it can be uh, any of our senses, but really what we have to keep in mind is that our senses are simply conveying information to our mind. And our mind is receiving that information and then comparing it to everything we've ever known and creating this feeling from it. And that becomes sort of the logic that's driven by it. Now, I, th I think that's really fascinating because really what this breaks us down is that 
every single thing that you are not directly observing is essentially a wave. It's essentially a, a whole group of anything, any time happening all around you, opportunity, just vibrating all around you, and you don't even sense it until you sense it. And I hate to say, this is not even sensing it. Like, you're not feeling me. You are not smelling me. I smell delicious, by the way. I took a shower with some new body scrub. Awesome stuff. But, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's the idea that on a small level, things vibrate. Things are moving. And we can't even predict it. We can't even see it until we try to measure it. Ah, so now, you guys laugh at that. So now I read this other book recently. Oh, uh, the neat thing about Goswami, quantum creativity. If you are a creative person and a scientific person, if you like understanding a little bit about quantum science and this double slit experiment and how the brain works and, and how we sense these things, Goswami takes this a little bit further because he says, look, if we stay in the point of not knowing, if we actually tell our brains to not hold on to a defined concept, then we are actually entraining our brain and our consciousness and our thought processes to resemble more of the wave of possibility. Now, the wave of possibility basically says, until you sense something, everything is possible. So Goswami goes on to say, look, this is essentially, essentially like the stair step to, to the ultimate universe, the ultimate consciousness. And that could be God. If, that, if you believe in God, God would be the ultimate consciousness, right? The one that connects with you in an intimate way, that, that sees everything, knows everything. Well, this is exactly what they are sort of, what Goswami is really saying about um, quantum science. And this is what it did for him, is it really brought home his sense of religion and purpose in the world, knowing that there is a higher power of consciousness working through him, with him, deciding that what he chooses to see, what he chooses to believe, actually helps things come into the world and be. And he goes on a funny story. He goes on to tell about um, his wife and he having an argument and he doesn't try to define the argument or try to um, narrow it down or, or create the particle, the perception of the particles within this argument with his wife, because as long as it is nebulous, as long as it is open, then there is possibilities beyond what his mind can choose can select as the particle of decisions. Now, that's a little hard to it's a little hard to um, grasp at first, but understanding that creativity, the way that he positions it, creativity is this wave function. Creativity is this vibration of the universe around us, this partial great uh, super consciousness beyond us of which we are sort of just filtering in and filtering through as the experience and creating the experience that we see, touch, hear, taste. See me touch, hear, taste, smell. <laughs> so we're creating this experience. And he, he actually believes in this book that by not tying down an argument, by not trying to define parameters, by not trying to point the finger, that it actually allows him on a sub-molecular level to remain more of the wave, to remain more of the, the general flow of the universe, to re remain in an, un, an unparticleized way. And in that way, every opportunity for he and his wife to make up and be happy exists until they start to define problems. I don't know about that or not, but I think it's interesting because creativity sort of works the same way. The more that you try to define, the more that you try to narrow it down, the harder it gets until you're really trained um, the designers. You know, I, I love you guys because I'm one of you guys. I, I think like a designer and I love bringing that to everybody else because here's the thing about designers. We love having some constraints. And the brain, human brain in general works this way. We love having some constraints because what that does is it gives us a parameter that we can start to play within. And that's sort of the idea with creativity in the quantum realm is when there's too much, it's just too much. The brain can't actually pick up all that stuff. They say that the physicists say that they've you know, measured the matter in the universe and of the matter in the universe, 
we actually detect like 5% of it. So imagine that everything that you know, everything that you see, everything that you believe about the world and the way that it works and the universe and the way that it works is 5% of known. So everything else out there is unknown. And that's dark energy. That, that's a catch-all. I, I didn't really realize that it's a catch-all, but that's a catch-all, dark energy. Because what that's saying is, we don't know shit. We're just going to call it something. And that's really exciting to me because that means there's huge possibilities knowing this quantum idea of wave and particle, right? If they can't know it and they don't know it and they're just trying to figure it out, then everything is possible until the point that they define it and, and then it's known. Hmm. Okay, so next book. Next book is one that I just finished reading. It's called The Grand Biocentric Design by Robert Lanza. Lanza, MD. This is what it looks like. And essentially, this is going over the same double slit experiment. This is going over a couple other experiments. And what Lanza is actually sharing through this book is that he believes that the world that we exist in exists because of this high vibration, of this wave-like state as well as particle state. And the thing that makes it the particle state is us observing it, participating in it, creating the world that we want because we believe and when, when, we, when we believe something, our observation skills, our, our senses of bringing it into our awareness, I've talked about the reticular activating factor. This is the filter that chooses what you see and how you see. Literally, reality is reshaping around you and shifting to meet the needs of what your brain, what your perception, what your observation believes it is. Not necessarily an objective reality. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that based on these two books, there isn't an objective reality. And this is a little challenging because I have known people who say, they listen to my positivity, they listen to the things I say, and they go, yeah, 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 I know that. Yeah, 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 I know that. But you know, that's not me. I'm just more of a realist. Well, if we look at the quantum science, if we look at what's going on, there is no realist. There is no objective reality. It is only with the thing that is seen and perceived. And, Lanza's book, um, the neat thing about the, another experiment he talks about is that this works backwards and forwards in time. How can that be? Basically, the experiment one of one experiment showed that that by not measuring and doing this, uh, it's, it's like a double experiment. I'm not a scientist, guys, so roll with me here. Basically, they ignored the experiment, got some results, put them in a paper bag, uh, left them for later, and when they checked it later, it said it was a particle, and then therefore in the past it was a particle but nobody checked at that time, so it should have been a wave. So everything, everything in the universe is going wave, particle, wave, particle, wave, particle. And somehow, by ignoring it in the present and checking it in the future, it changes the past. Now here's an interesting thing you may or may not know. The brain doesn't really recognize time. It recognizes the perception of now. This is very Eckhart Tolle. I am here now, there is the now, there is only the now. The past is a memory in my head and the thought of a memory to compare now against to know whether now is now or now is then. Now could also be the future, but the future is never actually the future because the future can only be now. And if I worry about the future, it increases anxiety. If I worry about the past, it, cre it creates depression. So now is now, just remember now. Ram Das kind of did the same thing, like, be here now. There is no other time. You are just here. Everything else is actually an illusion in the brain. And we look at that in the quantum science, and we can actually kind of see how everything other than what you are currently experiencing, which is particle. And the more physical you are, the more present you are, the more you are wrapped around this vision of who you are right now, right here, owning it, feeling it, that is you becoming very particle, very here. Now, if you go inside of yourself and sort of imagine your body inside, close your eyes and just imagine your body inside and imagine yourself, I don't know, glowing and imagine yourself floating and vibrating and, and just joyous and happy. Now, that is creating an inside state that is waveform, that is opportunity, that is growth. And some, some meditators actually believe that that feeling inside is actually the counter to the entropy that is, um, entropy meaning a tendency towards chaos, that is frankly the 
inevitable outcome of every system, our solar system, our life, our, our, um, our everything. Everything falls apart eventually. Everything breaks down eventually. And that, that's entropy, right? That's how things in the universe create, is that things break and then become new. Well, there's a lot of meditators and a lot of uh, uh, physics is kind of showing this, that uh, this concentrated inner energy work is actually creating a more organized vibrational state somehow. So that's really interesting. So everything's kind of breaking down between uh, either particle or like something that's really vibrating. And if you can't directly see it and observe it in some way, it's probably vibrating just beyond your consciousness until you make a decision to see, acknowledge, hear, feel, um, and then both forwards and backwards in time uh, collapse, the wave collapse, waveform collapses and brings about the, the life that you know and are experiencing now. So this is the now. Um, and that's sort of the sum, sum up of, of those two books. And it's really heavy quantum science stuff, but I really kind of want to jump into this because a lot of the reason I do branding, the reason I do, uh, I create logos and I really help people is because I believe in, in programming your brain in the vision of the future because I honestly believe that doing this collapses the quantum wave within you, within your future, creates some of that weird entanglement stuff with, uh, with molecules of the future and brings it into your life. And if you're into the law of attraction stuff, um, Esther Hicks, the secret, um, definitely what the bleep do we know? Uh, a lot of that stuff is really about, um, Esther Hicks really, um, is about the vortex. You know, there's this vortex that's in the quantum realm, in the, in the ether all around you. And this vortex is waiting to bring you everything you have thought about, everything you have dreamed about, everything you have ever wanted in your life. Now, when we look at this in the quantum sense, it literally is right there. It is literally waiting to come into your life. And when we use this sort of thought process and we apply it to your business, we apply it to your brand, we apply it to what you're doing, it's more than mindset here. And that's what I want to get to it. And, and tomorrow I will tell you why mindset is not enough. And I will actually share with you another book uh, that will help kind of transition about, okay, I've got the mindset set. What's the next step in bringing that to reality? Because there's a lot of tricks to it. And there's a lot of complications that we have built in this world that we have in training people to behave a certain way sociologically, societally, we, we, there, we, we've created a lot of trauma in ourselves that make it difficult for us to succeed. So tomorrow I'll talk about that a little bit. And today I just want to wrap up by saying that all of these waves, all, all of these particles are thoughts. They're, they're things that you interface with and that by choosing them, by narrowing them down, you create less wave and more particle. And the less wave and more particle you get, you are getting more definitive in your physical world. The more wave you get, the more nebulous you can be, the more comfortable you are with uncertainty and moving into realms that are slightly woo-woo, slightly out there, just letting the world be. This is where faith comes in. The more faith that you have in the world and the universe just showing up and providing you the things it needs to provide you at the right time, the more you are harping on the quantum connectivity around you and actually allowing it to manifest for you. Abraham Hicks often says that when we try to think of the steps one by one by one, it's slow and to get to the end result is plodding and difficult. But when we encompass a big vision and we say, I I have this vision. It is going to be, I trust that it's going to be, and I release it to the universe to make it happen. Things can happen in the quantum realm much, much faster than they can in the physical realm. And that's sort of the reason that I love branding and I love working on logos because this is energy. This is a representation of who you are and what you do and who, what, you know, everything you're bringing to the world. And it resonates with the people that you want it to resonate with. That's what I do is creating this reverse engineered resonance within a logo, within a concept, so that when you use it, it reaches out to people and it grabs them because it holds your entire quantum vision and helps bring it to you. So that's what I believe. That's why I do the work that I do. That's a little bit on quantum physics today. Um, there's so much more in this stuff and I'm going to, I'm going to get into it a little bit more this week to really talk about, um, 
I don't want to call it mindset because it's more of just opening up beyond Newtonian physics. It's opening up to the possibilities of the universe being bigger and more gentler to you than you have been probably led to believe. So um, this is about the end of my time. I just want to share, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one, -on -one, if you're interested in going through my program, it is called Manifest Design. Why is it called Manifest Design? Because I believe with quantum science and neuroscience and behavioral science and a little bit of uh, RTT um, mindset transformation, uh, everybody can reach the inner and outer world that they want to reach. And this program uh, is an eight, eight session program and it goes over everything, everything from your vision of the future to the customers you want to work with. Now, if that's a niche and you've already got your niche, that's great. We're going through um, personalities. We're gonna go through avatars. We're gonna go through um, archetypes to really hone down even within a niche. Who are the people that you really want to talk with? Who are the people that you easily, effortlessly talk with? And, you know, that helps because it helps frame the entire conversation. You get you can be more creative in it when you know who you're talking to and how you're talking to them. Um, we also go into your brand and really identify what are the values, what are the benefits, what are, what are you trying to share through your brand? It's called brand strategy, strategizing what you want to share, how you want people to feel when working with you. I want people to feel not just enabled, not just enlightened, but energized for the future that they are building when they work with me. So all of my sessions are all about creating this vision, programming the brain, programming the subconscious mind to accept it so that you easily, effortlessly take the actions necessary to build your business, to build your coaching business, your consulting business, your complimentary medicine business. God, I love you guys. My wife is a doctor of acupuncture, so I'm always trying to help the complementary medicine business. I feel that there is a great synergy between traditional medicine and complementary medicine, and we need to synergize more in this world, in this country, um, to, to bring the best benefits of everybody. So if you're interested in any of that, then you, know, you can comment down below with a little magnet symbol or just hi. You can friend me. You can follow me. Um, honestly, the best thing to do if you want to take the next steps in your business today and you want to talk with me one-on-one, -on -one, go to my website, www.thinktankcreative.net and right at the top will be a button to schedule a free consultation, free. So take up a uh, half hour of my time. Let's talk. Let's see if the program is right for you. If you just want to talk about what you're doing and, and try to see what your next steps are, let's do it because I would love to help you. And if you just want to schedule a consultation so you can talk with me and try to pitch me or sell me on something, sure, I'm willing to play that game. I'm always willing to listen because I love selling. This is selling. This is relationships. This is trying to share who I am and what I know in a way that someone, maybe it's you, says, wow, this guy's awesome because I'm awesome. And you want to work with me because I'm awesome and I can help you take the next steps. And if you have any questions whatsoever, just comment down below. I really appreciate you uh, listening to my, my lecture on quantum science. And uh, to, to have a takeaway for the day, know that the universe is looking out for you. It's looking out for you every single second because you are part of the universe and you are looking out for you and stop being so hard on yourself because that puts it from wave to particle. Just know that you're awesome. Awesome is wave. And you are a big wave and you deserve all the awesome that's coming to you. All right. Take care. Bye.